Good morning, friend. Welcome. We're glad that you are with us today as we record episode 164 yes. of the Family Meeting Podcast. We're glad that you're with us. Hope everything is going great in your lives. I know everybody is busily getting ready for Thanksgiving. It's next week. We're thinking about it here as um, we kind of prepare. We've got a bunch of family coming into town. So that's kind of what's going on First in the of Oster all, camp. First hold home. on. You have a bunch of family coming into town. I don't have family coming into town. Yes, you do. I don't. They are your family. No, they're not. Yeah. He's all talk. He loves my family. Yeah, you just said it. My family. That's what you said. So, turns out I'm right. You're never right. <laughs> so. <gasps> all right. Kind of want to know what you got planned for your holiday. We got going on Thanksgiving. Is your family coming into town or is your wife's family coming into town? I had a friend of mine send me a text last night. They uh, they cook a tech. They cooked a test turkey, and so sent me a before shot. Getting ready to go in the oven. They had all kind of veggies or something under, cut up underneath squash and whatever. Mm, that sounds good. So I texted them back. I was like, "That's way too many vegetables," <laughs> and they said, "Yeah, that's gonna go in the trash when it's done." <laughs> no, for real? He's saying that to me. Oh, okay. He, he doesn't really care for vegetables either. So. Okay, so his wife is putting vegetables around the turkey. <laughs> yeah. Wow, the same thing is happening in multiple homes. Yeah, definitely. And then when it got done, he sent me the finished product, and it looked amazing. So You excited? I'm, yeah, I'm going to cook up a test turkey today. No, he's not, because the turkey is in the freezer, and it is hard as a rock. <laughs> so so make happening. sure you take your thir- turkey out. Yeah, don't forget to take all that the, turkey. How many years in a row did we forget to take the turkey out? Where we? we? Were like, Yeah, we. Yeah, we. Don't even try that with My me. job's cooking the turkey. Yeah. That's it. And my job is literally everything else in the world. Yes, that's how it works. Are we starting this podcast with a fight? I don't make the rules. You are picking fights and I'm going to come through. <laughs> I'm not picking fights. That's literally the rules. We you know, everybody knows the rules. Like, I didn't make them. I just make the turkey. Some woman probably made the rules. She makes everything else. <laughs> that's funny. You know it. I need to just finish this coffee. All right. Gather around, everybody. It's time for a family meeting. The family meeting is a show that's all about family relationships. Where are the Oster Camps? I'm Thomas. This is my wife, Angry. Yes, I am. Hello, and welcome to our family. Welcome to episode 164 of the Family <laughs> Meeting Podcast. Here we go again. Not a great start this week or last week. 164? I'm sorry, you guys. Is that a question? <laughs> the numbers change every week. It's really tough. Yeah, they go up by one. It is rough. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, um, yes, on today's episode, we are going to talk about holding grudges. Oh. And how devastating they can be to your life. Um, We're going to hear about all the grudges Lysander's been holding against me. Yes, this is going to be a great opportunity for me to air out all of my grudges. Thomas, do you have any? No. Not that I can think of. Why? Uh, Because you don't do anything wrong. (laughs) Boom. See, that's how you make up for the math comments. (laughs) Um, so yeah. before we jump into that episode, it is Thanksgiving coming up, and of course that leads right into Christmas, leads right into New Year's. For us, that leads right into um, a busy time. At we got a couple of things at our church that that are happening. So it's just a it's crazy busy mm-hmm. right now this holiday season, and it reminds me of a book that. You wrote Lysandra, Mm -hmm. Balancing the Crazy. Yep. Things get very crazy very quickly. And just trying to find, um, and this is, maybe this is where some of you are at. You're you're just trying to find a way to balance it all. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that book is it gives some very simple, very practical ideas for how to go about that. And I love the way that you wrote that book on purpose to be a quick, easy read because yeah. busy moms, especially, which is, is, is the demographic, just don't have time to sit down and read some big, long, thick book. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, 
I'm, I'm trying to write to the busiest people in the world and uh, not going to give them a big giant book to read because nobody's got time for that. We can't do it. It's too much of a commitment. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. maybe you're looking for some ideas of how to balance everything that's going on in your life. Um, head over to Amazon. Balancing the Crazy by Lysander Ostergamp. be a big help to you. I hope so. So grudges. It seems like some people are more likely to hold a grudge than others. Um, and I don't think it's I don't think it's necessarily um, male a male female issue. I think, no, I think uh. there are males who hold grudges and females who hold grudges, and I think there are males who don't hold on to anything, and females who don't really hold on to anything. Yep, and vice versa, absolutely. Um, yeah, some people just kind of naturally let things go, and they can move past stuff seemingly without any effort. Um, Thomas, you're one of these people who can just move past things for the most part, for the most part, yeah, for the most part. But for Thomas, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I think a lot of the reason that he doesn't hold grudges is because he doesn't remember things. Yeah, I don't, I do, I don't remember a lot of things. Like there are times when I will come to Thomas and be like, the Lord's really been working on my heart. I need to say, I'm sorry for what I said the other day. And he's like, you said something the other day. (laughs) You you were talking. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I don't know if that's a listening problem or a memory problem or what. But. I faintly remember hearing your voice, but that's all the time. <laughs> yeah. Did it sound something like this? Wah, 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 wah. Well, wait a second. You can't use that. What? You can't use that Charlie Brown teacher voice because you've never seen Charlie Brown that's ever. That's a Charlie Brown teacher voice? I thought that was just like a voice people do when they're not really listening, but it's someone talking in the background. No, that's Charlie Brown's teacher. Uh, from like the cartoon? Yes. That's why everybody does that? Yes. Okay. Oh, so I'm not allowed to do it because I haven't seen the movie. Well, I didn't it's know not, that. It's not, not a movie, even the cartoons. Oh, there were episodes. Yeah. Okay. I I mean, I know there's the Charlie Brown Christmas movie. And I guess I was thinking that there were other Charlie Brown movies. There is. Halloween one. Oh, okay. But there are also episodes. Yeah. Okay. Is this... So we were, we were having a conversation <laughs> last night with one of the guys on our preaching team. Because in December, we're doing Christmas at the movies. And we're taking Christmas movies and pulling out the, the biblical lessons that we can learn from them. And he's, he's going to be speaking Christmas Eve in the morning at our church service, and he's doing Charlie Brown Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so we were talking last night, and Lysander mentioned that she had never seen Charlie Brown ever. No, nothing. None of Charlie Brown. And here we are, hours later, doing the podcast, and you're doing Charlie Brown's teacher. I honestly, I did not know that that was Charlie Brown's teacher. I thought that was like the sound people make when they're not really listening to people. They, that, that no, that's it. But it's because of Charlie Brown's teacher. She, you couldn't understand her voice. That's the noise she made. Okay. And the idea is that children don't actually listen to their teachers? I don't know. Okay. But. Wow. Well. You can't use that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That was, this was a little rabbit trail. What are we talking about today? <laughs> Holding grudges. Maybe we should get back to that. Yeah, good idea. Because <laughs> all of our listeners right now are holding a grudge against us for not talking about what we said we would talk about. Well, I think they're just blown away the fact that you've never seen a Charlie Brown at all. I think there's a lot of people who have never seen no, Charlie Brown. No. We didn't have cable. Was it on cable? No. Everybody oh. in the world has seen Charlie Brown. What was it on? Was it on like 279? Yeah. The holiday movie would come up every year. In fact, it was a big deal when it didn't show up on basic TV because Apple purchased the rights. Yeah, I know none of that. Okay. So anyway, so we're changing. <laughs> this episode's changing. We're going to talk about grudges some other time. This one's all about Charlie Brown. I don't want to talk about Charlie Brown. I don't have much to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short episode. <laughs> okay. So so as far as in our family. The the person more likely in our family, in our marriage, I should say, to hold a grudge is me. Yeah. And um, I don't think it's because I'm not a forgiving person. I think it's because I remember everything and everything hurts me. And then uh, I'm so I'm I'm too sensitive. But you know what? It turns into holding grudges. So let me ask you this, because I'm kind of curious, because I don't remember. <laughs> what is the last thing you held a grudge against? against me for (laughs) you're i know you remember it's not like you can be like i don't remember 
Or maybe you're holding a grudge against me right now that I don't know about yet. <laughs> you're awfully quiet all of a sudden. I'm feeling nervous. <laughs> it's like it's like when you have a house full of toddlers and all of a sudden it gets quiet. It's like that's the time to be afraid. Something's wrong. Lysander's not talking. <laughs> Next words out of her mouth are, you know I love you, but... <laughs> That is how you start the conversation, people. <laughs> I think you're a great father. <laughs> you're such a wonderful husband. But. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm trying to think. Um, the last thing like that I held a grudge against you for and, you know, we came through it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I wasn't prepared for this question. And so I really, I haven't really thought about it. I, let me think about it. And if I come up with it throughout the episode, I'll just interrupt you. This is, I mean, she, she forgave and forgot. Yeah, exactly. And that is the goal is to, to forgive. Um, we don't, we don't always say to forget because sometimes you yeah. need to remember what happened so that you don't put yourself in a harmful situation exactly, again. Yeah. So we are not forgive and forget people. We are forgive and let it go people, <laughs> but, but remember what happened. Um, and so, so, but I would say that Thomas is excellent at forgiving. Um, I am more than ready to forgive, but I remember things better. So that's kind of the way it is in our house. I will say it's so much easier for me just to forgive and let go if somebody does something against me. Like, that's totally easy for me to do. Mm -hmm. If it's against you or the kids, that's a little harder. Like, I can still remember when we were, you know, flirting teenagers. Um, one lady, and I won't say her name, but she was she was mean to you. Yep, she was. Um, mm -hmm. For whatever reason. It seemed like she was always being mean to you. Yeah, she was after me. And I still, I still remember that. Mm -hmm. And um, there's other, other instances as well. We've we've dealt with a few people along the way that for whatever reason just don't like Lysandra, mm -hmm. and I think that's weird because you're you're the nicest person I think I've ever met in my entire life. Mm, I don't know. I hold I hold some grudges. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so I remember those things, but if it's against me, I don't. I don't. It's like oh well, that's yeah. Because I I have forgiven people in my life that have been like that, and Thomas won't forgive. <laughs> I wouldn't say won't forgive, but you're you hold a grudge for for sure against those people. If those people's there's only like there's two, maybe three. If those people's names are mentioned, Thomas is like, what a jerk. <laughs> like, I, I hate them. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'm working on it. Okay, good. Yes, because that that's it. Wherever you land in this whole holding grudges thing and like letting it consume you, work on it. That's the point, is we want to work on it. I will say that I do love all those people, and I wish them well. I'm happy to hear you say that. You don't say that to me. <laughs> it's, it's not like I want bad things to happen to them. Good. Yeah. That's good. So that's I don't not, know that that's true. necessarily holding a grudge, but I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do remember. Right. Okay. So let's, let's talk about what actually can happen to us personally if we hold grudges. How does it actually affect our lives? So we came across this great article on mayoclinic.org, um, which I, I found very fascinating because obviously the Mayo Clinic is, is not a Christian organization. And um, what they had to say as we, as we were kind of going through this, and I remember just telling you, like, this is really good mm -hmm. stuff here. Um, it's... It... it um, it goes to show you the power that holding a grudge has on us physically. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it does affect your health. Right. And there's a reason why the scripture talks about making sure that you forgive people and putting away bitterness and all those sorts of things, because that does affect you. What's going on in our hearts affects all of us. Every single part of us, including our health, um, and so here's uh, here's some of the effects of holding a grudge. So, if you struggle with finding forgiveness, these are some things that you will probably experience. And the first one that they mention in the article um, is 
bring anger and bitterness into new relationships and experiences. Mm. Um, and as, as I said a second ago, if we're holding on to grudges, that affects every other part of our lives. Yes. It's not like we can compartmentalize that, oh, no, it, it only affects my relationship with just this one person or it only affects my own thoughts or whatever else. No, like you're bringing that into your new relationships and experiences and it's, it's tainting all the stuff in your life. Um, it is, I'm trying to think of something. It's what, what would be the opposite of a Midas touch? Like the Midas touch is everything you touch turns to gold. So it'd be like a, a bitterness touch maybe mm-hmm. where everything you touch is just corrupted by this bitterness. Mm-hmm. Your view on everything and your relationships is just affected by your lack of being able to forgive. And some of you are, are in second marriages. You have um, experienced divorce, divorce or widowhood or something, and, and you're in the second marriage. Um, but what's happened is there are hurts, there are, um, there are wrongdoings that have been done to you that you have never really been able to get over, and you have brought that into your second marriage. Mm-hmm. And now, not only are you fighting with the issues that you and your new spouse have, but you're also, you're fighting a ghost. You're fighting someone from your past, um, whether it's an ex or, or someone who has passed away. And there's, there's too much going on in your marriage. It feels like you can't move forward. You can't get past all this stuff. It may be because you're still holding grudges from that, from the past, and now you've brought it into your new relationship, and it's destroying it. Well, and you, you think about the, the divorce percentages in our country. Um, First-time marriages across the board is about 50% divorce rate, hmm. so about half. Um, if you've been divorced and you get remarried, that second marriage, I forget exactly, but it's somewhere around 70%. Mm. Like it jumps up and then third marriages is even higher. I, that's for, I think that's for a couple reasons. Okay. One of them is, and this is true of anything, once you've done something, it's easier to do it the second time. Mm-hmm. So whatever that is, if you've given in to like, say you're, you're trying to lose weight and you've given in one time to that bowl of ice cream, you're going to give in again. Mm -hmm. Statistically speaking, it's easier to go back to that, right? And the same is true of divorce. Once you've been divorced and been through the process, you (coughs) bless you, know what to expect, it's easier to go through that process again, no matter what the circumstances are that led to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other one is this that we're talking about. Because... You're, if you bring in all this baggage, grudge, bitterness, it, it starts to negatively affect that relationship, which then makes it easier to get out of that relationship. And then you're going into the next, and you just keep stacking on the, mm-hmm. the bitterness and the grudge, and it just, it just pollutes it. It pollutes that new relationship. It pollutes experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Finding a way to let go of those things. Yeah, and we're and we are going to talk about that at the end of this episode. So, you know, the beginning here it really is going to be kind of heavy because we're just talking about all the negative effects of holding a grudge, and we're going to talk about how to hopefully move past that. Um, so, don't feel like, well, my marriage, my second marriage is definitely doomed because I obviously have a problem with holding grudges or bitterness or whatever. There's going to be hope. Just wait for it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's definitely it's definitely not doomed. Any relationship can be healthy. But you 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 and I have to put in the work to have a healthy relationship. Mhm. Mhm. Okay, so here's another one that this article from Mayo Clinic says, and this is so true. You can become so wrapped up in the wrong that you can't enjoy the present. So whatever oh, yeah. has been done to you in the past is eating away at you so much. It is swirling around in your mind over and over and over like a song on repeat that you can't even enjoy things that are happening right in front of you. 
You have a hard time maybe enjoying the joy of your children. Maybe you have a hard time enjoying your current spouse. Maybe, you know, who knows what it is, but whatever's happening right now, you can't even enjoy it because that that thing, that grudge that you are holding onto is is just in the forefront of your mind. It is ruining what's happening right now in the present. Yeah, and um uh, learning learning to to let go takes away that that filter that you're looking at everything through the negative filter Mm -hmm. the painful filter and all of that so um a lot of people miss a lot of the good things going on currently in their lives um because of of things that they just won't let go of and we we counsel people a lot we have a lot of people come through and, and tell us their problems the things from the past the things that are happening in the present And there's one thing that I can say about everyone who has come through is that everyone has problems, everyone has trauma, everyone has horrific things that have happened in their past. It's really the way that we choose to deal with them and look at them that makes the difference. And we touched on that just a little bit last week in our episode on pain. But honestly, like there are some people who will come in and they'll say, Like, it's almost like they're saying nobody has had it as bad as I have. Yeah. And so that's why I can't move past this. And this is not something that we say to them, but actually, no, I've heard of a lot worse. And and there are people who, because they're dealing with their bitterness, their anger, they're getting to forgiveness, they can face life with joy. They They can be free of it. But the reason that this person can't be free of it is because they're just living in it. Yeah. They're just wallowing in it, indulging in it, playing that victim, staying there. It's like, no, you've got to break three up free of that and you've got to get to the point of forgiveness. And then even though you've had a horrible thing that has happened to you, you can move forward and you can live a wonderful, happy, joy-filled life in the Lord, but it won't happen if you stay in your grudge. And sometimes people just don't understand that. Yeah. And... um we, and we are proof of that. You know, we we've, we've both suffered sexual trauma in our past, and we could use those things to, you know, skew and taint the way that we're looking at the world now, or we can choose to um, move past it. Right. And like we said, forgive and, and forgive and, and let go. Yeah. Um, here's here's another thing that will happen to you. Another effect is. You will become depressed, irritable, or anxious. So it, it j- literally just starts to change who you are as a mm. person, um, which then affects the way that you look at everything, the way that you deal with everything. Mm-hmm. So if you make a choice not to forgive, you're going to hold on to this thing for a variety of reasons. Um, just know and understand this is the, what it's going to lead to. Right. Right. And depression is, is something that is, it's touching almost everyone right now, I would say, because either you struggle with depression or you have a close person in your life who does, it is all over the place right now. And, um, and some of it may be because someone hasn't been able to let go of a grudge and it's just led to this depression, this difficult state, the irritability That makes so much sense to me because when you hold on to a grudge, you are constantly in this state of protecting yourself from being hurt again. And anything that anybody does can become like a trigger. Anything that anybody does can be like, what did you mean by that? You know, and just everything can bother you. And of course that would lead to anxiety because you would constantly just be in turmoil about this. So that those things really make sense to me. And there there are times when you are holding on to something. Most of the time it's against me. Um, <laughs> no one can hurt me like you can, baby. Exactly. <laughs> Probably rightfully so. Um, deservedly so. But there's there are times where because we have a very playful relationship, <laughs> as as you can tell. But um, there are times where I'm trying to be playful and you are beyond irritated. Yeah, where I don't think it's funny anymore. 
And so it's like, oh, like. Something's up. <laughs> what's going on? And you know what's interesting in those moments is there are times when I, at the very same moment as you, realize there's something wrong. Because I'm like, why do I not think that's funny anymore? Why is that irritating to me? I'm like, I must be mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on in my heart? What's Because I know that I'm not really upset about the banter. I'm upset about something else. And I'm irritable right now because of it. So then I'll have to start digging around my heart and figure out, okay, why why am I mad at Thomas this time? <laughs> I usually just go get her get her Snickers. Yeah, right. <laughs> that does not work. You're not yourself right now. Yeah. Nice try. That would not work. Okay. How about this one? <clears throat> you feel at odds with your spiritual beliefs. Now, remember, this is, this is a point written by the Mayo Clinic. Very interesting. As you hold grudges, you can get to the point where you are at odds with your spiritual beliefs. You begin to question everything. This thing is tearing apart your body and soul. Yeah. Um, and when we're, when we're off spiritually... That's that's a big thing. And that's exactly what this does. Um, and we think like it's no big deal. Right. That's the thing. It, it starts off and we think that it's no big deal to hold on to this thing. But for most of us, for most people, their spiritual beliefs are the most important thing to them. Mm-hmm. And so the Mayo Clinic is recognizing that holding on to a grudge will actually throw you like push you away from the thing that is most important to you that's how powerful holding on to a grudge is that is that is what it will do to you um and then finally last thing we'll share with this is so we talk about the spiritual beliefs now we're going to move on to the next most important thing to us and that is we lose valuable and enriching connections with others like it, it starts to affect all of our relationships, mm-hmm. and we start to lose those connections with each other. And we, I, we, we joke just a second ago about Lysander being irritable. Most of the time, it's when I do something, but not always. Like sometimes it has nothing to do with me; it has something to do with a different situation. And because of that, that starts to affect our relationship. It starts to leak over into the way that we interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the same is going to be true of you because it it affects our whole lives, Mm -hmm. every part of it, not just your relationship with just that one person, whoever it is that hurt you or whatever else. No, that trickles down to everything. And you may be thinking about the grudge you're holding. I have a right to hold on to this grudge. I have a right to be angry. I have a right. And you know what? You probably do. You have a right to do that. Yeah. Um, But what we are trying to prove to you is that you are hurting yourself. Yeah. Just because we have a right to do something doesn't mean it's the best thing for us. I was just talking about this the other day in our, um, I forget what, I think it was in our fasting series. And we were, I was talking about what Paul said about the fact that, hey, all things are lawful for me. In other words, I have the right to do these things. But he says, all things are not beneficial. Mm-hmm. Like, they may not be the most beneficial thing for us. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily what's best for you. Could you? Do you have the right to hold a grudge against that person for whatever it is they did to you? Yep. Probably. But we need to focus in on what's best for us. What's right. best for us, what's best for our life, what's best for our relationship with God and others. And what we're seeing from the Mayo Clinic about our personal health. What we're seeing, we're going to show you from the scripture for our spiritual health, for the relationships in our life. It is best for us to let those things go. Right. The other thing I think that people sometimes think is, I'm going to hold on to this grudge to punish that person. I'm punishing them for what they've done to me because I've I've, I've held on to this grudge. And that is a lie. If yeah. You're lying to yourself. You aren't punishing them at all. You are punishing yourself, and you've given them more power than ever. They probably have no idea. Yep. They probably have no idea. Or if it's really obvious and like you're really good at your grudges, um, and it's real obvious to them, they probably don't even care. They probably don't even care. <laughs> like, oh, that person hates me. Whatever. <laughs> it may actually bring them joy. Yes. 
You may be doing the opposite of what you're trying to do. And the bottom line is you are hurting yourself. So let's look at the scripture. Let's look at Ephesians uh, chapter 4, 30 through 32. And we're going to we're going to see what not to do. And then one thing that I love so much about the Bible is we're going to see what to do. And God so often shows us, hey, this is going to hurt you. This is what's best for you. And you can replace the thing that hurts you for the thing that is good for you. And what I love about what's written to us in the Word of God is it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. It doesn't matter if you believe or not. These are principles that if you put into practice will positively affect your life Yep. in every instance. They will positively affect your personal health. They will positively affect your relationships with others. Now, for for Christians, which I think a, a lot of a lot of people who listen to this podcast are Christians or followers of Jesus. When when we scare, share what we're going to share here, especially these verses in Ephesians chapter number four, this is not optional for us. Mm-mm. Like these are commands as followers of Jesus, the yes. way that we're supposed to live our lives. Um, and so Lysander wants to share a couple of verses here out of Ephesians chapter number four. Uh, the first thing, the first verse that we're going to start with is, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And the thing is, when we when we hold these grudges, mm-hmm. when we allow these things to take over our lives, we are grieving the Holy Spirit of God. And if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit lives within you, dwells with you, which means when His Spirit is grieved, you are grieved. And I believe that that is another reason why you feel at odds with your spiritual beliefs, because you are actively going against the Holy Spirit of God who is with you yeah. all the time. Yeah. And it, it doesn't get along. Grudges don't get along with the Spirit of God. They're against Him. And so you feel that depression, anxiety, bitterness, irritability, whatever it is, because it's you're not at one anymore. You've got this problem, and it's just bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And it can ruin so many aspects of your life. Okay. Well, and and we think that we're doing something against the person who grew, who did something against us. But in reality, when you look at what he's saying here, you're doing this against the Holy Spirit of God in that next phrase says, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And you think about the God who saved you. Yes. Like that is the person who you're really acting against. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not the person who did some horrible thing to you. Now we're not we're not trying to lessen what's happened to you. Mm-mm. So some of you have suffered some horrible things. We're not trying to say that those are insignificant, that they don't matter. Um, not at all. What we're trying to say is don't let what they've done to you totally destroy you. Right. Don't give them that power to destroy you. And um, we think we're fighting against that person. We're not. We're really fighting against God. We're fighting against ourselves. That's right. And verse 31 says, let all bitterness, there's the grudge holding, and wrath and anger and clamor and slander. What happens when you hold a grudge against somebody? You're, you're going to usually slander them to other people. Right? Well, and it really is a progression here. It is, it isn't start, it? It starts at the bitterness. Yep. Um, holding that grudge. Elsewhere, it's called a root of bitterness. And um, all these other things are fruit of that, the wrath, the anger, the clamor, the slander. All those things are fruit of the root of bitterness. Mm-hmm. So we got to pull out the root and the rest right. will follow. Exactly. So have all those things, bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander, be put away from you. In other words, get them out. As Thomas said, pull out the root along with all malice. You know, sometimes we become very malicious toward the person we're holding a grudge. I hope they just get in a car accident. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about earlier with those people who who were mean to you. Like, I don't wish bad things to happen to them. That's what malice is. Right. Malice is you want to see bad things happen to somebody. And we can, though, get to a point where we are so bitter, where we want to see bad things happen to somebody. Absolutely. Have you ever been like that with your spouse, where you're like... He is so mean to me. I hope that he just gets a taste of his own medicine and I hope his boss treats him like crap. You know, or I whatever. I don't have a boss. I'm not talking about you with this hypothetical. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, we can we can be malicious toward our, our spouse even. Yeah. Where it's like, if he's going to treat me like that, I hope other people treat him like that. Or I hope, 
he doesn't get that promotion or whatever, you know, I don't know, whatever it may be. But we can actually hope and wish bad things even on our own spouse because the grudge becomes bigger than everything else. Okay, those are the things to put away. Those are the things to get rid of. As we talked about, they will harm you. And we've talked about the fact that you've got to get rid of them. But now what? How? How do we get rid of them? What do we do? What's the, what's the opposite? And then that's where verse 32 comes in. This is the verse that I made our kids memorize when they could barely even speak. Yep. When they could say like 13 words. I was starting them with this These verse. were 12 of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Be kind to one another. Tender hearted. The opposite of tender hearted is holding a grudge. Holding a grudge, you have a heart of stone toward that person. And, you know, as we've already mentioned, that that translates to other relationships as well. How about this one? Forgiving one another. So you're going to be kind, which is a choice. You're going to allow your heart to be softened. You're going to forgive. Why? How? What does that forgiveness look like? Here it is. As God in Christ forgave you. Because you know what? You have broken God's rules. Yeah. You have done wrong against God over and over and over. And if you're honest with yourself, you have flashes in your mind of times when you broke God's rules, whether you had evil thoughts, whether you looked at something you shouldn't have, whether you said things you shouldn't have, whether you let your anger get a hold of you and, and take over. Whatever these, these wrongdoings you've done against God, you know what they are and you can see them right now. God forgave you every one of those. Christ came and he died and he took that sin upon himself so that you could have forgiveness. That's the kind of forgiveness we are supposed to give to others. That's the kind of forgiveness that we're to give that person that we are holding that grudge against. So rather than hold grudges, we're to choose forgiveness. Well, and I think about the the story that Jesus told. Um, and he tells this story about a guy who owes a debt that he can never, ever work off in a million lifetimes. Just billions of dollars that he owes. And the time comes where the person says, hey, pay me what you owe me. And, and he says, hey, just give me time. I'll pay you everything. And rather than throwing the guy in prison, throwing him to a lifetime of servitude, um, he forgives the debt. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what forgiveness is. It's releasing the debt. So here's a person who has been forgiven so much. More than he could ever pay. He immediately leaves that circumstance. He goes and finds somebody who owes him $20 and says, pay me the $20 you owe me. And that person says exactly what the other guy had said. Hey, just give me time. I'll pay you. And instead of forgiving, he throws him in prison. And um, that's exactly the way that we are right. oftentimes. God has forgiven us so much. Um, no matter what somebody does to you, it'll never compare to what you've done to God. Mm-hmm. And yet God has forgiven you. And he says, we need to learn to do the same. You've got to release that debt that they owe you. Um, so l- let's let's kind of look at the other side. If... If we forgive the debt, um, you know how can how can we do that? How do how do I move towards that state of forgiveness? I know I'm supposed to, like I know I'm commanded to. Do. I know it's good for me. How can I do that? And this is coming from the Mayo Clinic article that we mentioned just a little bit ago. Um, and I like what they point out. Forgiveness is a commitment to change. That's good. And it it takes practice. <laughs> You have given me so much practice in forgiveness. Thank you, love. You're welcome. It's what I, it's what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it starts with this. Recognize the value of forgiveness and how it can improve your life. So we've already talked about all the negatives. By choosing to forgive, we're getting rid of all those negatives. Mm-hmm. That is a positive for us. Yeah. There is so much value in learning to forgive, in learning to l- release the debt. Yeah. 
And and when you recognize the value of forgiveness and the fact that it can improve your life, it makes you want forgiveness. Because a yeah. lot of times when we're holding grudges, we don't want forgiveness. Yeah. There's, I don't want it. I'm trying not to forgive. And literally, that's how grudges can be, where you actively replay the thing in your mind. You not only replay it in your mind, but you replay it in your emotions. So you feel the hurt over and over and over to make sure that you do not let it go. You want to hang on to that grudge. Yeah. Where, when you find the when you see the value of forgiveness and the fact that it can improve your life, you start to change that feeling where you start to want the forgiveness rather than want the grudge. You got to want forgiveness more than you want the grudge. Yeah. All right. Then they say this, identify what needs healing and who you want to forgive. I mentioned that just a minute ago. I'm all of a sudden irrit irritable with Thomas. Why am I so irritated by everything he does? Yeah. Women, can you feel me? Okay. <laughs> a lot of women are irritated by me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But there are times when you're with your husband, and you're like, why is everything he does so irritating? Like he's chewing. Why is he chewing? Oh my gosh. The chewing, you know, whatever it is, all of a sudden you're so irritated with him. And what I have to do is I have to be like, okay, this is not about the chewing. I am mad. I'm uh, mad at this guy. I, it, Why? The way some people chew, it might be about, it might just be about the chewing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If that's not a normal thing for you though. <laughs> <laughs> Something's up, right? And that's when sometimes I have to take a step back and I have to see, okay, what needs healing? In other words, what am I actually mad about? What actually hurt my feelings? Because usually the grudge, it's not about really anger it's really about hurt hurt turns to anger okay so what how did my feelings get hurt now i will say this for for most of there are times where we're not aware mm -hmm. like I'm, i don't i don't understand where this is coming from i've got to take some time to think about it and process but for most of us who are listening you know exactly what needs healing you know exactly who you need to forgive you know the thing that's been done to you and as i mentioned some of it's horrible things and, and it's not just going to be, well, a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. That's why they talk about the fact that it takes practice. Yeah. Like, it's a commitment to change. I am committed to getting through this thing. I'm committed to forgiving them. It may not happen all at once, but you, you know, like, you're listening to this right now. You know who it is you need to forgive. You know what they've done to you. Let me ask you a, a question, Thomas. I want to know just your opinion about this. And um, I don't know how qualified you are to answer this question. But. Probably not qualified at all. <laughs> but I'm curious about your opinion. If you forgive someone and you believe that you've forgiven them and things are good and then a trigger happens, something reminds you of that uh, trauma that happened to you years ago and all of a sudden all those feelings come rushing back, you're all of a sudden angry about it. Did you ever really forgive them or is it that you have to, and I'm coining this term, re-forgive. Well, I would say that, that it is a process. Healing is a process. Um, and just because you forgive somebody, and I think you can truly forgive somebody, and then have these triggers come back. Um, because I think about, and we, Lysandra and I have had this conversation before about the things that have happened to us, where we both truly feel like we've forgiven that person, mm -hmm. whoever it was. They were different people for each of us. Um, and then something happens. Yep. Like you see certain clothing or you a fragrance or a song or food or whatever it is brings, back, brings it all back out of nowhere. Um, for me, what, what I have to do is... I've got to forgive again in that moment. Mm -hmm. Me too. Where it's it's like, okay, God, I need you to help me continue to forgive this person. Um, because it does bring back all those feelings. And it's so powerful. And depending upon what's been done to you, it's, it's you're not just going to forgive. You know, I mean, you're not just going to get over it. Mm -hmm. And for, for some of the things that have happened to us in life, those triggers are always going to be there. Always, and they, forever. And they always come out of the blue where you're not even thinking about it. It's mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you're walking down just getting groceries and you happen to look down and see something that reminds you of the trigger or, or triggers the, the thing the, that it happened yeah, to you. Trauma. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the forgiveness is genuine in the moment. And you can feel it in the moment. You can feel the peace and all the stuff that comes along with it. And then these triggers happen. Um, 
and then you've got to you got to go through the process again. It's it typically is a little easier each time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and can happen faster. Yeah, but it's it's still a process of getting through. I don't think it negates. Well, m- your forgiveness was never genuine. Right. Like no, this is this is part of the healing process, and it doesn't happen instantaneously. But that's a good question. I agree with that, though. I agree with your answer. That'd be first. <laughs> um. All right. The next thing is this: join a support group or see a counselor. So, for some of you, depending upon what you've been through, what that person has done to you, you need a support group. You need some people who have gone through the same experience as you and can help you kind of work through some of those things. You need a counselor that you go to, um, somebody that you you trust and that will listen to you and deals with the specifics of what you're dealing with. Um, well, Sandra and I, we, we deal with marriages all the time, and that's kind of a thing that we we really love to talk about. There are certain things, though, that we're just not qualified mm-hmm. to deal with. And so we encourage people to go see a professional counselor that that's what they do. Like they deal with this all the time. They know exactly what you're going through and they can give you the steps to help you to work through that. But for some of you right now, you just, you're in a point where you feel like, I want to forgive, I want to forgive. I just don't know how. I don't know how to get through this. Well, you need to go find that person who can help give you the steps to be able to work your way through it. Because you've got to work your way through it. And this leads us to the next thing that they talk about. All right. The next one is acknowledge your emotions about the harm done to you and recognize how those emotions affect your behavior and work to release them. So this, let me, let me put this into a little uh, hypothetical example. Okay. This is not real. I'm coming up with this on the spot. Okay. So recognize the harm done to you. Recognize how those emotions affect your behavior. So Let's say that in a past marriage, you had a spouse who, um, when their football team would lose, would physically beat you. Okay? Wow. And I'm totally making that up, but it's pretty, it's pretty serious. Yeah. That took, that took me by surprise out of nowhere. I didn't know you were going to say that. <laughs> Does this trigger anything for you? This is, no, this has not happened, by the way. <laughs> this has not happened at all in our, in our home. We're used to the Hawkeyes losing around here, so... <laughs> Yes, and I don't have any bruises, so we're good. Um, but maybe because of that harm done to you, now anytime somebody watches football, you have a problem with them. Sure. Like you just associate that with the the trauma that happened to you, and so you can't even stand football, and you look at football as evil in general. It's just wrong. You hate it, whatever. Or you get on the defensive, or you can't be in the room, you can't hear it. So you're you're re- recognizing what happened to you, and you're also understanding how those emotions affect your behavior now, and your viewpoint now, and how it's how it's affecting other aspects of your life. And then you're going to eventually work to release those. So let's let's bring that illustration from. I, I'm sure that is that has happened to somebody somewhere. But let's bring it more into our world where we're at right now, and that okay. is um, a church hurt you. Somebody at church. Mm, yeah, this is, that's our this, world. Because <laughs> this happen, This does happen. It happens a lot. It's happened to a lot of people we know, especially because of our, our background, um, being in a very strict conservative, conservative uh, Baptist background. Um, a lot of people have been hurt by church. And mm-hmm. so that that affects them right but not all churches are evil Mm -hmm. not all churches are hurtful and hateful but we can let that experience keep us from enjoying the the fellowship and the love and the encouragement of a healthy situation Mm -hmm. right and you know it's it's funny because i'm not really sure what how people view this if they are, are church attenders. So I just attend a church I, or, or I'm, a, I'm a member, I'm not on leadership, but whether you attend a church or you are the pastor of the church, people in the church will hurt you. Yeah. It goes both ways. I think some people think, especially if it was a pastor in the past who hurt you, you think like pastors hurt people, but the truth is people hurt pastors as well. So it goes back and forth depending on, you know, what's going on in that in that church situation. I I know a lot of pastors. I don't know any pastors who have not been hurt by church people. Yeah. 
Yeah. So people who walk away from church and are like, church is hurt hurt people. It's terrible. The truth is your pastor is trying to not walk away from church because of church hurt. Yeah. It really is true, you guys. Um, because because people hurt people. That's the thing. People hurt people. Um, but you've got to acknowledge that that harm that's been done to you that is causing you to hold the grudge. Recognize how it's affecting you now and how it is kind of coloring the world you're looking at. And then the goal is to work to release them. And I like how they put that work to release them because it's not like, I release right now. Yeah. It's gone. Like you're just like opening a, a cage where doves are are in there and they just fly off into the distance and life is beautiful forever. You have to work to release them. It is, as we talked about, a process. Some of those doves stay around for a while. Mm-hmm. You're like, why are you flying back here? I thought I let you go. Yeah. <laughs> they fly right back. Um, here's the next thing. You... You have to choose to forgive the person who's offended you. Mm -hmm. It's not just going to happen. Right. It is a conscious choice that you make. And that's why Paul wrote to the Ephesians there that you you forgive. Because it's it's a choice that we have to make. You have to choose to forgive. It's not, not going to be instantaneous, just like we talked about. You work to release and you work to let that go. Um, mm -hmm. And release the control and power that the offending person and situation had in your life. And I think that goes along with a choice as well. You, you're choosing to release that control and power. And then you know what? When it comes back up, as we talked about, the triggers can come back. You choose to release it again. You choose, choose to let it go again. You choose to forgive again. And, and there's where that process comes. Yeah. And so that's, that's the process of, of moving to a state of forgiveness. But all right. What if we get to a place where I can't forgive someone? I don't know, babe. You know, forgiveness can be hard. Yeah. Especially if so the person true. who hurt you doesn't admit wrongdoing. Mm. And, and here's something that we need to be aware of. Okay, the, the person never has to admit wrongdoing against us, and we can still forgive them. Yes, that is a And good we still thing should know. forgive them. Mm -hmm. uh, forgiveness is not based upon anything the other person says or does. It's not, well... They're not sorry, so I don't have to forgive. No. You need to forgive. It's good, it's good for you to forgive. It's beneficial to you for, to forgive, no matter what the response is. That's right. And the, the abuse that both Thomas and I experienced in our younger years, neither of those people asked for forgiveness. Right. To either of us. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, this is just not going to happen. <laughs> It's not going to happen, but we have to choose to forgive. But what if we're what if we're stuck? What can we do? Yeah, that's tough. But here's some ideas. This is man. This is tough to even talk about. I, I'm I'm just I'm telling you right now, people. Okay. I'm having some feelings come come up. Yeah. Because I I don't feel like I have um, held on to grudges. You know I'm I'm we're we're talking about some sexual abuse in the past and. I have, I know that I have forgiven and I know that, you know, we, we both are aware of both of our own situations and we work through it and it doesn't affect our lives on a regular basis, but then you start opening up and talking about things personally. And, and so I'm having some feelings come up and I'm having a hard time reading these next few words. Listen to this, practice empathy, try seeing the situation from the other person's point of view. And that's tough if it's a real trauma. Yeah. Like if it's not just like my husband didn't bring home the groceries I asked him to bring home. I'm so mad about it. You know, I'm holding that grudge. That's quite a bit different than if we're talking about sexual abuse, right? There's like quite a, a wide range of offenses that can happen to us. Yeah, and I think the point of what they're trying to say here is not necessarily an abusive situation. In an abusive situation, I'm thinking about something a little bit different, and that is, what are the things that happen in that person's life to lead yes. them to where they are right now? Yes. And trying to have empathy for that person who did something so horrific to you is difficult, but it can happen. You can have empathy for them, and it can help in forgiving, for sure. Um, but maybe, maybe for you, it isn't some really, really horrific thing. Maybe it's something just more simple that you can't get rid of. Um, I, I do like this this idea of trying to have empathy for the person, trying to see things from their point of view, or trying to see, like you said, what happened in their life that brought them to that point. Like, um, 
like maybe they had a really difficult childhood and now um and now that that that's why they're treating you the way they treat you um and and this goes hand in hand with the next thing and that is to ask yourself about the circumstances that may have led the other person to behave in such a way um and, and so we've kind of focused in on some of the things happening to us. For a lot of the things that we deal with in life, it's not some horrific, abusive thing, right? It's somebody who's been selfish or whatever. Um, or maybe they've just had a bad day. Mm-hmm. We're not making excuses for people. Everybody needs to be responsible for their own actions. Yes. But think about what are the circumstances that led up to that. Mm-hmm. And perhaps you would have re- reacted similarly if you face the same situation. So thinking about, once again, what led to that. Right. And if you are having trouble forgiving, reflect on the times when others have forgiven you. That can help you come to a place of forgiveness. First of all, think about what God has forgiven you of. And yeah. then think about like when, when you messed up and you hurt your spouse and they forgave you. Or when you yelled at your kid and you apologized and they forgave you. Think about those things and that can help you get to a point of forgiveness. Because we, we've, we've all done things. Yep. We've all needed to be forgiven. Whether it's something we've said, something we've done, we've been thoughtless, we've been careless, we've mm-hmm. been mean. Like We've all done that. Oh, yeah. And all of us have needed forgiveness. All of us want forgiveness. Like, I want people to be forgiving with me. And so thinking about all the times others have forgiven me, that helps me to be able to get to a place where I can forgive somebody else. Um, You can also, they encourage you to write in a journal, pray, or use guided meditation. Now, obviously, we believe in prayer. Um, Or talk with a person you found to be wise and compassionate such as a spiritual leader, a mental health provider, or an impartial loved one or friend. Mm-hmm. That's and, good advice. And this goes back to finding a counselor or a support group or somebody to be able to talk things through with. And be aware that forgiveness is a process. And we've really said that throughout this entire episode. Yeah. Even small hurts may, be, you know, may need to be revisited and forgiven again and again. Don't be frustrated that your forgiveness process is taking longer than you want. Most things in life take longer than we want. Yeah. And and, and it's not instantaneous. No. We we have we've grown up thinking that everything needs to be instantaneous. It's not. There's no microwave for forgiveness. Mhm. There's nothing to speed up the process. Mhm. It's going to take the amount of time it takes and usually Depending upon your personality and depending upon what was done to you, it may take longer. Yeah. But you've got to be committed to just continuing to work through it. And I think about like how we are with Wi-Fi. Man, if you if you type something in Google on your phone and you push search and it takes three, four, five seconds, and that bar is just slowly, that blue bar is just slowly going across your screen. You're like, what is happening? Yeah. What what is happening in my world that I cannot get this? This happened to me yesterday, so I'm still a little raw. <laughs> She's holding a grudge against Google. <laughs> it happened to me yesterday because I had the worst Wi-Fi ever. And I'm like, how is it that in 2023, I have bad Wi-Fi? I should have good Wi-Fi everywhere. Yeah. But that's that's kind of how we are. That that attitude and mentality, it, it crosses all the lines. Yeah. <laughs> and even in my forgiveness and in my healing and in my hurt and in whatever it is, I want it to be instantaneous. And you guys, it's not. No, it's And it not. is frustrating. And it's almost like looking at that blue bar trying to load and you're like trying to get to forgiveness and it's just not happening. Don't give up. Keep going. It's a process. Bring God in on the process. Bring him in and say, God, I need you. I'm, I'm, I'm working toward this forgiveness, but I need your help because you can't do it without him. He's going to help you bring it the rest of the way. And with your family meeting tonight, we want you to sit down with your family and just talk about forgiveness. Um, I want you to just talk about some things, and, may, and depending upon the age of your kids, you can go around a room and just share some of the ways that people have hurt you and you've been able to forgive them. And, or... You can also spend some time sharing some things that some people have done to you that you're currently working to forgive. That's good. Depending upon the situation. Um, hey, this happened, and man, dad's really trying to 
I'm, I'm working to forgive. I'm not there yet. I'm working to forgive. Uh, but going through, we want to use the things in our life um, to equip our children to move further and faster than we ever could. And one of the best things we can do for our kids is to teach them how to forgive, mm-hmm. how to let go of those grudges. Um, because unfortunately, as much as we don't want it to, people are going to hurt our kids. Yep. They're going to deal with things, and we need to give them the tools to be able to walk through this and learn to forgive. Because we know, and it's not just, hey, the scripture talks about it. No, this we're talking about scientific medicine understands the harm that holding a grudge has on us personally. Mm-hmm. And it has on us relationally. So... Have a little conversation tonight. This is going to be one of those open conversations where we deal with some of the things that people have done to us, and we use that so that our kids can be equipped to forgive. Thanks for joining us today with this episode on grudges. Please go and subscribe to the Family Meeting Podcast from your favorite podcast provider. And if you found this information helpful, please share this episode on social media and invite your friends and family to listen in with you. To find more content and information Lysander and I provide, you can go to our website, familymeeting.org, or email us at info at familymeeting.org. If you'd like to shoot us a text or call us, you can send a voice message at 904-257-3062. And we want to invite you to join us for our next family meeting as we talk about the upcoming holiday season. It's Thanksgiving yeah. next week. Turkey time. Turkey. Um, we'll share some of our family traditions with you and give you suggestions of new, fun Thanksgiving traditions that you might want to start to implement this year. There's some new ideas, babe, that you've never heard of. Thomas hates it when I do this because I'm always like, oh, we should do this. We should make this special by doing this. No, I I actually have one. I'd like to share. Ooh, I can't wait, but don't share it now. No, I want to share it now because I want to give people an idea. Okay. Um, What I want to start for us this year is just the six of us going away to a beach condo for Thanksgiving. What do you think of that? We'll talk later. Well... Thanks for joining us today for this family meeting. (laughs) Have a great week, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. I don't even want to high five you right now. She's holding a grudge, y'all. She's holding a grudge. Put into practice what you just talked about. You got to learn to forgive. It's a process. It's going real slow. But I think that could be a good holiday tradition. I think the girls will get on board with this. I do not think so. They cannot wait to see their cousins. Hey, what what about this tradition? <laughs> I I get a condo on the beach just myself for Thanksgiving. Bye. Well, you heard it here, folks. She agreed. <laughs> all right, I gotta go make these reservations because all the condos are gonna be totally reserved. So right. we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>